welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Nigeria strengthens ties with Morocco as both countries sign agreements on regional gas pipeline, global investment and agriculture training. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju asked ministers of oil producing nations in Africa to diversify economies away from dependence on oil. Two killed, four others injured in fresh suicide attack on Meduguri, the Burma state capital. And all is set for Tuesday's summit between President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Now, ChannelCV.com has more information for you, and on YouTube.com forward slash Channels Web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser, or download the Channel CV app for Android, iOS, and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel CV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Let's look at some of those pictures now. We have good news coming in from Mokwa Jeba Expressway in Niger State, showing the result of the intervention of the federal government following the collapse of a culvert after a rain. Now the eyewitness who sent this photo in appreciates the prompt response. And next is this one from the Otedola Bridge around Omole Phase 1 here in Lagos State, showing this fuel tanker driving against traffic. According to our eyewitness reporter, such long vehicles are prevented from using the road because of the state of the road and the height of the bridge. And finally is this image from Joel Ogunaike Road in Maryland, also here in Lagos State. This video shows the gridlock. Our eyewitness reporter says that a driver parked a car here regardless of the inconvenience it would cause. Thanks for all your pictures and do send us in some more when you can. Cooperation among countries in the Lake Chad Basin is what's needed to tackle cattle rustling in the region. That's the view of representatives from Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon and Chad at a meeting in Yola, Adamawa State to address the common challenge. In recent years, cattle rustling in Africa has grown both in scale and has become more violent. It's been linked to organized criminal and terrorist groups as a source of income. Rustling activities have resulted in the theft of a huge number of cows, deaths of people, and destruction of property. It has significantly contributed to the increasing security challenges facing the region. This has become a source of worry, not only to the government, but also to residents. This meeting among four countries bordering the Lake Chad Basin, holding in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, is to find ways to address not only the challenge, but also that of insurgency in the regions. But the Nigerian government says it's already tackling the menace. We have faced Boko Haram challenges in the north. That's where the Commissioner of Information is from. We have cattle rustling. We have armed robbery. We have so many of these fighting herders and farmers, but we are doing something about it. In this particular workshop is to come up with very solid resolutions or communique that will afford the government to now come up with uh, a very good policies that will be able to arrest uh, in entirety the issue of uh, cattle buffalo. The visiting countries believe increased regional cooperation is required to address the challenge. If we combine our forces and our mind together, I think that we can solve the problem. This is just one among several meetings to come, and it is expected that at the end of the dialogue, far-reaching decisions will be taken that will help in checkmating the activities of Rosslers.
Let's take a look at some legal matters. The trial of the lawmaker representing Kogi West in the National Assembly, Senator Dino Malay, and two others for alleged illegal possession of firearms and criminal conspiracy began today in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. The two prime suspects, Kabiru Seidu and Nuhu Salihu, as well as Senator Dino Malay, have all pleaded not guilty. The prosecution, led by Dr. Alex Izion, says the offences are contrary to Section 97 of the Penal Code and Section 27 of the Firearms Act, laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 2004. Dr. Izion reminded the court that the pleas of the defendants were not taken on arraignment, submitting that the court has the jurisdiction to try the case. But counsel to Senator Dino Malay objected to the application, saying that the case was a criminal one in which witnesses must give their testimonies in open court. In his ruling, the senior magistrate, Mr. Sulaiman Abdullahi, said he would wholeheartedly want trials in his court to be concluded speedily, but he'd have to look at the rules of the court. He therefore adjourned the case to July the 26th for commencement of hearing. We felt that um, if we file at the positions and then you come over and cross examine, yes. it will expedite this matter be going on. But since the other people objected and the judge magistrate said that uh, we're well, letting take the normal course, so no, it's okay. They want the trial to be expedited by the witnesses not coming or rally or viva voce, that is the invoice to testify. But to put down their evidence in writing, in form of an affidavit, which we call written deposition. And we said, no, this is very strange to criminal trial. And the trial of two former ministers, Fermi Fanikayode and Nenadi Usman, on charges of alleged 4.6 billion naira fraud, could not go on at the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos today, owing to the absence of the EFCC's third prosecution witness. The counsel to the EFCC, Mr. Idris Mohammed, told the court that the witness who resides outside the court's jurisdiction was pregnant and following medical advice is currently on bed rest. He therefore asked the court to grant an adjournment, a request which the defense team did not oppose. Mrs. Nenadi Usman is charged alongside a former Minister of Aviation, Femi Fanikayode, and one Yusuf Danjuma, a former chairman of the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, on a 17th charge of money laundering. Mr. Ferdinand Obi, the counsel to the first defendant, then informed the court of a pending ex parte application which he wanted to move, where the former finance minister is seeking leave of the court to serve a motion on notice on the Minister of Information, Mr. Lai Mohammed, over allegations of contempt. His counsel told the court that the information minister had published a list of looters some weeks back and had named Mrs. Usman as number 19 on the list. The counsel said his client views such acts very seriously as it's an attempt to interfere with the proceedings before the court. The counsel therefore urged the court to grant the ex parte application, enabling the defense to serve the said motion on notice on the minister in Abuja by substituted means, as personal service may not be feasible. The judge, however, ruled on the application, asking the application to be served on the confidential secretary of the information minister. The court then adjourned until October the 2nd for hearing of the motion on notice and for continuation of trial. And staying with the courts here in Lagos, a high court sitting in Igbushiri has sentenced the 28-year-old man, Kingsley Iyang, to life in prison for defiling a 12-year-old. Justice Ogunsaya convicted and found him guilty of defiling the girl, a junior secondary school two pupil, contrary to Section 137 of the Criminal Law of Lagos State 2015. After a trial which lasted one year and three months, Justice Ogunsaya held that the Lagos State Prosecution Team proved its case beyond reasonable doubt. She found that Iyang's defense was inconsistent with the testimony of his girlfriend, who stated that on the day of the incident, he spent only 15 minutes with her, contrary to Iyang's claim that he was with her the whole day. Iyang was arraigned on March the 3rd, 2017, when he pleaded not guilty to the application and was granted bail. During the trial, the victim told the court that the first time Iyang defiled her was on a Sunday evening after a fellowship service, following which he threatened to assault her if she told anyone. And from legal matters, we move on to health. And the federal government has secured an extension of funding for vaccine from the Global Alliance for Vaccine and Immunization from 2021 to 2028. The intervention from the organization comes a few weeks before the expiration of its 17-year collaboration with Nigeria. 
The Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, says that over $1 billion intervention from the group organization will be targeted at vaccine procurement and the strengthening of the health system across the country. Why the rebasing of our economy? Nigeria rose above the threshold of support from Ghana. And therefore, we must enter into an, a period of accelerated transition from Ghana support. This implies that the federal government of Nigeria will have to progressively increase funding for immunization program in Nigeria and co-financing of vaccines until Nigerian transits completed in 2021 out of GAVI support. However, due to poor macroeconomic indices, tight fiscal space, and a further reduction in funding for polio-related activities, and very low immunization coverage, Nigerian stocks and an extension of GAVI support from 2021 to 2028 in order to ensure that we can fully finance our immunization and primary care system. A GAVI transition proposal the Nigerian strategy for immunization and primary care system strengthening. When the News at 10 returns, Laser Engineering and Resources Consultants Limited inaugurates state-of-the-art laboratories in Port Harcourt to boost research in the petroleum sector. That's on Business News. Do join us again.